video is about cultivation and propagation. Starting with cultivation, that's the act of preparing the land to grow plants, whether that's for agriculture, like different crops, or horticulture, which is more landscape type plants. Propagation is something you'll want to learn how to do if you're planning to cultivate your land, because with one or two plants, you can get multiples. There's two categories of propagation. The first one is sexual propagation. You have a plant that reaches sexual maturity, produces flowers or flowering like structures that then get pollinated. As a result of that, you get seeds. The benefit of sexual propagation is that you're getting genetic material from two parents. So the offspring is more diverse and robust. They're more resilient because there's genetic diversity. For humans, we get stuff like fruits and seeds from this process and a diverse selection of plants. You might find some unique characteristics that you want to preserve in future generations. The downside is that the plant has to reach maturity, which can take years in some instances, and some plants will also die after they reproduce. The other category of propagation is vegetative or asexual propagation, where you take a particular part of the plant, divide it up, and get multiple new plants from that. Here, I can divide up the garlic into multiple cloves, and I can cut up the potato, and now I've got multiple plants from just these two. The benefit is that you can create identical plants, so each of those garlics, each of those potatoes, are essentially clones of the original plant. If you're farming, it's helpful to have a standard set of plants because you can provide the same amount of care for your crop. You can also preserve specific characteristics like flower or leaf colors or disease resistance. The flip side of that is if you have a plant that's essentially identical to itself, if one plant gets hammered by a disease or a pest, they're all getting hammered. Although humans can get really involved in vegetative propagation, at the end of the day, it plays into that plant's natural characteristics. Not every plant can be divided. Not every plant will take from cuttings. What humans can do is develop different techniques and really facilitate or accelerate the process. This plant here, you can see it's forming a mini plant. When that plant falls over and hits water or soil, it'll root and create even more plants, which can then be cut off the main plant. What I can do is facilitate what's already doing by placing a pot of soil and letting it root into that. There are some other methods of propagation that people created to take advantage of these characteristics. Take grafting, for example. When you graft a plant, you take a piece of stem from a plant that you want. This is called the scion. Then you splice it on top of another stem that has the roots. This is called the stalk or the root stalk. If you're successful, you get the desirable qualities of the scion on top and whatever the strength, resistance, and other beneficial characteristics of the rootstock on the bottom. There's another method called budding, where you can take the bud off of the tree that you want, cut a slit into the stem of another tree, and insert the bud. If you're successful with either method, you can end up with branches of different trees on one stem. This is how you can create what's called a fruit salad tree. And of course, those plants have to be relatively similar and compatible. If you're looking at plants at a nursery, you will know if you're looking at a propagated plant based on the name. If it has a secondary name with a single apostrophe on either end, like this Zutano avocado here, it was cultivated by taking parts from an original plant that had the characteristics that they wanted to preserve. Now, the reasons why or where propagation will apply to tree care. This is more specifically focused on vegetative propagation because for the most part, trees will sexually propagate themselves if you leave them alone.
It could be as simple as getting your client a specific cultivar of a tree. With crepe myrtles, which are really popular landscape plants, there's a ton of different flower colors and those are all correlated to a specific cultivar. Or in the more high stakes situation, let's say your client likes ginkgo and they want one near their house. At maturity, the female produces a fleshy cone that looks like a fruit and it smells terrible. You couldn't just get them a standard ginkgo because it could turn out to be a female at maturity. So you have to know that there are male cultivars that exist so you can avoid that problem. You can also save a lot of money by learning how to propagate plants. If you're working on a restoration project, it's helpful to know that willows easily propagate from stem cuttings. So you can cut pieces off of nearby trees and plug them into the ground. Or maybe you are really a fanatic about Japanese maples. There are a lot of cultivars of Japanese maples, but they get pretty expensive. If you know how to graft, you can take stem cuttings off of other trees, and pretty soon you'll have a whole collection for pretty cheap. Another reason might be if you had a sentimental tree that you wanted to keep or move with you, but you couldn't because it's planted in the ground. You can take parts of the top with you to wherever you're going. And let's say you just are not interested in any of those things. Still, it's helpful to know because some trees will propagate themselves vegetatively through their root system. And this is really, really important to know. There are tree species that are notorious root sprouters, like cottonwoods, poplars, and tree of heaven. The sprouts that come off of their roots are the same as a parent plant. If you don't know any better and you just cut down the main trunk, those roots will sprout all over, creating a mini forest that's going to be hard to manage. To avoid this, you want to pre-treat the tree with herbicide, or at minimum, you want to treat the stump immediately after you make the final cut. Now, some clients are anti-herbicide, anti-roundup, but when it comes to a really notoriously weedy tree that sprouts from its roots, this is almost non-negotiable unless they want to mechanically till and remove every fragment of root from their property. So this was just a quick overview of propagation and some of the different types. There's a lot that I didn't go into like layering, air layering, cuttings, micropropagation, division, and so on. If you're interested in this topic, I highly suggest you start with the Wikipedia page for plant propagation and learn about other different types from there.